Hello, my name is Damien. Today I'm going to look at replacing those complex switch or condition actions in Power Automate. In my use case, I'm going to use the trigger when an e email is received and I'm going to check the subject for a particular word. If it contains one of 10 potential words, I will then forward that email to one of 10 addresses using either a switch or a condition. But is there an easier way? I'm hoping to show that using arrays, yes, there is. So let's jump to the demonstration. So here we are in a new flow with the trigger already configured when a new email arrives, and we're gonna use the switch control. So with the switch control, um, we're gonna look at our subject, and uh, the subject line must equal exactly the string that we put in, uh, in the box here. So we're going to assume that uh, the subject will contain, or not contain, but equal the word finance. And what we'd be looking to do is we'll be sending an email and creating an item. Now I haven't added in the email address, but the aim here is to have a different email address per subject. So the finance will go to the finance email address, the legal will go to the legal email address, and so on. So we're creating our second case, the legal, and again creating the same uh, list of actions that would be performed if the subject line equals legal. And then third, we'll create an HR. So you can see already we've got a rather complex switch case. And my use case is actually that the subject line will contain. So to be honest, this solution isn't going to work for me. Let's now go and look at the condition case example. So again, a brand new flow when an email arrives and we're gonna choose the condition control. Now the first thing we insert is the subject, because of course we want to see if the subject contains the keywords. And we'll select the dynamic value there of subject, and I'm going to insert finance, which is our first department. We're gonna add in the same actions as we had before. We want to send an email, and of course, if I completed this in full, I would be putting in the email address that's specific to finance, and I'm going to have the create item action. Now, because we've got multiple uh, departments, we want to uh, compare the uh, subject against. Again, we create another condition. We'll put in the subject dynamic value, contains, and this time I'm going to go for the ICT, ICT department. So if the subject line contains ICT, and as before, we will go ahead and create the same actions. So you can, you can already see on screen, the flow is becoming quite complex and it's taking up a lot of the workspace that we see in Power Automate. And not only that, in order for me to see which of these actions are for which of the departments, I have to expand the control actions. So I'm going to rename them to finance and ICT respectively. And we'll go ahead with adding our third parallel branch. So finally, we will again select the subject and we'll put in our third department name. Now remember, my use case is for 10 different departments. So you can imagine how complex this Power Automate Cloudflow will get, and it will take up a lot of space on your screen. So we'll just finish off creating the item action, and then let's have a quick look at the Cloudflow in full for those three different options. Let's now look at the simple and efficient method using an array. So here we are again with a new cloud flow when an email arrives. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a compose action. And in here, I'm going to uh, paste in my array. So you can see here, I've got uh, key values department with business development, legal and marketing amongst other departments. And we also have email addresses that are unique to those departments. I'm going to rename that compose action to array with params just for, for ease of recognition. So we'll create our next step now and we're going to use the filter array. So the aim is to perform a filter on these parameters and then we're going to use the index of expression. So that will look 
for a string within a string. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to search the subject. So we'll look through the dynamic values here and choose subject. So we're looking to see, does the subject contain a specific string? I'm going to use item and we're going to use department. And that is the key value that will come from our array. We're then going to choose is not equal to negative one, which means the filter array will return only those values that are contained within the subject line. So now that our flow is saved, we will go ahead and test it out. So we'll manually trigger it so we can see uh, the results. And what I'll do is I'll jump across into my email and we'll send myself a new message. And so the subject line for that message is going to contain one of those departments. So we'll go with marketing. This is a marketing test email and a short description. We'll hit the send and check to see if the flow is run. So we can now see that the flow is run. And if we scroll through the array with params, we can see the marketing department and we can see the marketing email there, hrogger2. And then if we look at the filter array, we can see that it has returned the object relative to that email address based on the department equal marketing. So we'll move on to the next step now. And I know I said we wouldn't use a condition, but we do need it if we want to achieve an else. So we're going to use the length expression. And so if the filter contains a match, we know that the length is going to be greater than zero, in which case we want the length to be equal to one. See if you spot my deliberate mistake. So like before, we're going to send an email and uh, of course create an item. And we're going to add dynamic content this time using the following expression. So first, which means it will retrieve the first object from our filter. And then we want to retrieve the email. And I'm just going to take a copy of this expression because I'll use it later on. So for the subject, I'm going to just include the subject of the original email address. And we'll just include an extra bit of text in the subject line to let them know it's come from a flow received in the monitored mailbox. So within the body, I'm now going to paste back in that expression that I copied earlier. And I'm wanting to retrieve the first name and, of course, the last name. Now, this is dynamic content, which is related to the object that we've retrieved through the, the filter array. So there we have the first and the last name. I'll put in the word hi. Now let's put in a little message. Please note an email has been received. And it contains the following content. And we'll just paste in the body of the email using the dynamic content. So I'll just sign off that email. And rather than having 10 different copies of the same actions, we've now got the one copy. And that's using the dynamic content from the array. So you can see this really simplifies the solution. So we're going to also create an item as well. I'm going to just choose uh, one of my test lists. And again, using the dynamic content, the expression that I copied earlier, I can paste that in and uh, we can choose the department, which is the, the string that we're looking for within the subject line. And we'll save the email in the, in the emails field as I've got one. So let's have a quick look through our flow here. Flip, we need to make sure that the length is not equal to one, albeit I have made a bit of a boob, so a bit of magic here. It has to be equal to one. And of course, I've added in the else statement. So if there is no match, we'll go and do something else. And let's go and test the solution now. So 
we'll just wait for the flow. It's now in the test mode and we'll go ahead and send myself a message. Um, this time we'll choose a different department and this is a sales email. And we'll check the subject. And here is the, the content of the email message. So we'll just click on send and we'll quickly jump back onto the flow. And it's hopefully, yep, it's run successfully. So again, let's have a look at the filter. We pick sales and we can see that it's picked out the sales uh, object from within that array. We've got our unique email address. It's evaluated true and it's gone down the yes route. And here is the subject. And we can see the email address above is addressed to the particular sales email. There we have the email for the item and also the sales within the title. So what I'm going to do now is another quick test run and we'll see if we can trigger the uh, else branch. So we'll create a new email, email address it to myself again and uh, this time the subject line won't contain any of those departments and so the hope is that there'll be uh, no results returned in the filter array and therefore the length will not equal one and it will go down the no route performing the else action so the email's been sent we'll jump back to our cloud flow which is now completed we'll look at the filter array which has got no output and if we look at the condition it's evaluated as a false and we've gone down the else route which is just a compose with a one two three so in summary, we had looked at a switch action. We did look at a condition action. Both of these things took up a lot of space on our cloud flows, but we were able to simplify them using an array that contained the parameters for our if else if expression. And then using the length expression, if it was not equal to one, we were able to branch down the no root and create the final else uh, action. Hopefully this has been a useful demo and will inspire you to simplify your flows and make it a lot easier to administer your solutions in the future. Thanks for watching and please make sure you like and subscribe.